the At Your Instep podcast is brought to you by Comic Town. Check them out at www.comictown.net or search for Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. Hello, and welcome to At Your Instep. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And Dave. Hi, friends. Uh, now, <clears throat> Dave, you, you did bring up how we uh, did not regale you for uh, procreating uh, on uh, last week's episode, so we just want to give you a good, uh, solid huzzah, and uh, oh, thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Could we Appreciate insert it. like the uh, like the PowerPoint applause effect? Uh, like it should definitely be like a group of children going, yay! <laughs> <laughs> and one kid distinctly going, boo! Just one. <laughs> just one, yeah. There's always one. But... Uh, he uh, that's the first. That's one of the first things that he said to us when uh, when he got here. So we had to like, rectify. You guys, it. you guys were kind of like just meh. Dave had a kid. Meh. It's not my kid. Whatever. There was an entire episode of Scrubs about how having a second child, no one cares. I'm not even kidding. Like so, the so the guy started lying that it was his first kid, so people would be <laughs> happy for him again. So from what I understand, this is an well, accepted phenomenon. It's, it's the first kid that I've had since I've known you guys. Okay. I know your other kid. But that doesn't change that's anything. <laughs> your other kid still exists. That's like, true. Like, she little exist. evidence that, like, that, like, unless she was, like, adopted, I'm fairly certain you guys went through this again. And I've, I've seen the face and the hair. It's not adopted. So. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, well, we, we do have you back for this week. So uh, we have a, a, full, a full crew. Feels good. Feels, uh, <laughs> Sounds feels ominous. <laughs> like, for this week. I mean, who, who knows what will happen. For the, the future is yet written. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but uh, we have a, a few things to talk about uh, for you guys this week. Uh, a couple of community things. And then um, uh, we obviously had the Open in Columbus that we want to talk about. We had GP uh, Rotterdam, which we will only mention as to the winners of the uh, tournament, as it was uh, team limited. And not really much we can you know say about it. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have our, uh, our, our typical wrap-up stuff. And then we'll kind of mosey on out uh, for this week. So uh, let's go ahead and get uh, talking about the community. Uh, so we, we did get a, a, a sneak peek look at the, the next Judge promo. Um, and uh, this wasn't through official channels. This is like a, a, a picture of, of someone like opening it up and, and getting it. And it is a Judge Foil Imperial seal. Or, or, which is, or, uh, or. you know, it, it, it's pretty huge. Obviously, uh, Imperial seal is from Portal's Three Kingdoms. Um, I thought it was from the ocean. Uh, no, no, different. Uh, I think I, that would be like a like an emperor seal or something like that. Oh, oh maybe an emperor penguin is what I'm thinking. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe seal, an seal. But but seals also do uh, do live in the ocean as well. It's true. Um, but um, this particular seal we're talking about is is from Portal's Three Kingdom, and um, um, <laughs> I, I sh- you shouldn't let me derail you for that long. Uh, but but sometimes I just like to give it to you. It's all right. <laughs> Dave's just like, uh, running, just like, ar- running around the the apartment here and uh, trying to. Hey, my laptop's almost dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to be prepared. We sat here for hey. twenty minutes before we started. Yeah, and, we yeah, watched my, stupid and, internet videos and, before we started. And my laptop was dying slowly <laughs> over those twenty minutes. Hey. All laptops are dying slowly, much like That's, all of us and everything that we know. Well, I got dark. Eat at Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> Eat at Arby's. Yeah, that that, that was your uh, uh, nihilistic Arby's uh, moment uh, for uh, for this week. Um, but these Portal Three Kingdoms cards are, are getting rarer and rarer. They're, they are getting more expensive. And not saying that you know a, a, a Judge Foil printing of it is going to help with the cost or anything of that nature. But it is nice to have a foil version. I know there's a lot of people that play it in, in Commander and in cubes and what have you that will appreciate this. So um, and it, it is a, a high dollar card for the judges. So uh, for those who choose to sell their foils, um, no, it's the same art, right? It is the same yeah, art. original art. Yeah, which is uh, uh, fantastic. I, I feel like a lot of the Portal 3 Kingdom, uh, that, that art is so uh, iconic because it's, it's so um, rooted in real life. Um, and uh, it's hard to change, in my opinion. Yeah, I, there are a lot of tutoring effects in real life. I could see that. Sylvan Tudor, which yeah. hilariously is it's, not a magic what, joke. What, why, why are you just so good at like derailing this this uh, 
this episode. Oh, I'm paid to do this. <laughs> By who? <laughs> Trolls mo- mostly. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so cool, Judge Foyle. Uh, if you're a judge, um, you know, expect to see that uh, in the future at some point in time. If you uh, get nominated for the exemplar program, I believe is how you get Judge Foyles these days. Or go to conferences still. Uh, but I don't know how early those things get into circulation. But that's pretty cool. Nice piece of candy. Uh, moving on. Uh, we do have some more information about the uh, standard showdown, uh, which uh, was you know finally uh, you know put up in an article on the you know mothership as it were, uh, and uh, I'm pulling up some of the details here. But it's uh, it's going to be running for what a few a few weeks. Uh, four, I believe. Right? Isn't that true? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, a little November. Less than yeah, it's 26th a little less. Twenty sixth to seventeenth. Exactly, yeah. and. Um, Stores will actually receive 40 of the prize boosters to hand out so they can kind of structure their um, events around that. They uh, should be going out. I think it's their Swiss events that they should be running, uh, and the boosters get handed out to the undefeated players um, in Swiss. I believe it's their set like four rounds or something like that. Uh, is what they you know suggest for the standard showdown. So, And it's going to be obviously standard uh as the name would imply. Uh, so you will not be, uh, as far as I understand, probably won't be seeing, you know, modern events with standard showdown <laughs> prize packages. Um, but it's a cool thing that, you know, again, uh, we, we talked about this. It kind of drives people into the store. Uh, and these booster packs, you could potentially, you know, open, you know, some high dollar cards, um, some some rare cards, some masterpieces or some expeditions, something like that. Um, or inventions or expeditions, I should say, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. You know, one in one in thirty three has one of those you know uh, foil premium cards. Um, notably, uh, something to note. Uh, notably, something to note. Yes, I understand. <laughs> um, there are. Let me take a look here. I do not believe. Um, for the like the premium cards, the the full art, you know, uh, masterpiece cards. Uh, I don't think there's Oath of the Gate Watch, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it says Zendikar Expeditions. Yeah, I guess it would cover both of them. I, I, I thought I uh, uh, read somewhere that. Oh, I'm sorry. Cards from Oath of the Gate Watch and Double Face cards are not included. But there that, you go. But that's actually only under the two non-premium cards. Yeah. So, so uh, but I see, I think, I think Oath of the Gate Watch Expeditions will still be covered under that. Then. I think, no, I th- cause I think they're just Zendikar Expeditions. I think they're all just Zendikar Expeditions. Yes, exactly. So, there, there will still be, yeah, I believe both, so. Oh, um, the, um, uh, Expeditions that did appear in Oath of the Gate Watch. Which I think for a number of people, they probably just wish those ones weren't there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, uh, can we just take that out all together? I mean, you, you lose what wasteland, right? Yeah. So, and I mean, there, there's some of the filter lands that are are kind of pricey. Nah. You, you also have like um, Horizon Canopy. Okay, well, okay, whatever. Yeah, you can honestly, you're, ancient we're, we're literally like, what are you going to be upset if you got your free booster pack that had three cards in it? Um, I guess stores also get a, a number of them to uh, include in buy a box sales uh, through December as well. Yes, I don't know. Is that uh, included on the, on this announcement? As no, well? it, it's it was a, in the WPN the, page. Yeah, yeah they, so essentially, depending if, if the store is participating, then you'll get two of these um, standard showdown boosters when you buy a sealed box of. Uh, I don't know if it's just Kaladesh or if it's all standard product. Ask your local store. Yeah. But that's a pretty cool thing, again, to drive sales for your local store, and I think that's important. I think Wizards, you know, is really, you know, showing uh, good support for uh, the, your LGSs, and so it's a good move. And then, lastly, uh, this is something that, you know, we wanted to comment on because it's something that we've been fairly vocal about within, you know, uh, our, our community and uh, with the podcast is, you know, the the difference between modern and legacy you know, open viewership and uh, we kind of wanted to give you guys an update uh, on that and just touch on it for for a little bit um uh, it's something i know that that mike has sort of uh, been uh, fairly uh, engaged on yes and and you know dave uh as well me less so uh but you know comparing what we what we saw so um last week we had a modern gp and we had a legacy open so it wasn't really fair to compare those two numbers when you're taking a look at what the top eight. The top eights were both going on at the same time, and you saw this large disparity, almost like 10,000 people difference, a 10,000 person difference in viewing. It was 10,000 person difference. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, a 10,000 person difference in viewing between the top eights, uh, with modern winning. Um, 15,000 to 5,000. Correct. Now, some might say, well, that's not fair. You know, Wizards sometimes gets, you know, 
more people to just to watch GPs more than anything else because of the the names that are there, or what have you. Various other reasons, but See, that's actually just not true. Like generally, if there's two standard events. Like, say, if there's a standard open and a standard GP, like, Star City actually often... Yeah, it, it really depends it. on who's running the GP, honestly. Uh, Channel Firewall has done a good job of getting viewers back, but in some of the random people they had doing coverage before, like, yeah, it wasn't always very good. Yeah. So... Mm-hmm. so it kind of depends, but... Yeah. But anyway, we, we had a better comparison, so we could you, we could directly compare a Star City Games event to a Star City Games event this weekend, because we, we had Legacy last week, and we had Modern, you know... Well, we had Legacy the week before, and we had you know, modern last week. So well, you said that you looked at the finals numbers and they were around, what, 12? Yeah, in the t- in, you know, well, just in the top eight, because we were in the top final. Eight. Top eight, it was at. over 12,000. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, you, again, you this is not this is not perfect data. You also yeah. didn't have a GP I, fighting this weekend. Yeah, you didn't have a, but, comp- a competing event. But I will say, the picture I took and I posted on Twitter specifically had the Modern Open and the second highest uh, event on uh, currently on Twitch, which is LF- LSV Streaming, which had almost 3,000 viewers. All right, So if you're saying, like, oh, well, there was no GP for this, I'm like, yeah, well, but LSV was also almost pulling as much as the uh, the top eight of the Legacy Open. So, like, there's a couple ways to look at those numbers. Either way, it doesn't look good for Legacy. <clears throat> and, you know, people were arguing, this was sparked by a Jeff Hoagland tweet, shocking, I know, <laughs> but... You had you had a really large open in Columbus this weekend. But we'll, we'll talk about here, uh, and he was talking about like how people people don't just talk. He essentially said people don't just talk about liking their format when it comes to modern. They show up and play it. And some people are arguing that like, oh well, the legacy opens have have had pretty good turnout, which isn't wrong, right? But the the counter argument to that is when you only have a few, that's the whole point is to you should show up for the ones that are there. Um, but then when you look at the viewer numbers, like people were saying, oh well, this and that. It's like the viewer numbers really tell the story you know say what you will about the week before with the you know oh well watsy had an event great if people love legacy and they hate modern right because that's that's what the pros say modern's bad one should have higher viewing you know what i mean and looking at it this week like oh well then like you know modern should have comparable viewing to to legacy then based on no it almost triple again so it, it just doesn't you know again i i feel like you know dave was worried that we were going to beat a dead horse here you know the the lovely south park uh jiff uh, but again, we're not trying to like. I'm not sitting here trying to like crusade against legacy. But I think I I, I am crusading against people who are. I don't know. I've, I've watched the, how people have interacted yeah. with like Cedric, yeah, who the, just like gives them facts and just gets wrecked for it. Like people are just like, oh, well, you're just wrong. And it's like, no, you are. Like, the, look at this. The people that are in denial yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got gotcha. you. Oh my gosh! Like the, this is the interactions on Twitter where it's like, well, I still think it's like this, and it's like, well, you can think whatever you want, but. You're just wrong. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got to give Cedric props on that because he doesn't really have to be that vocal about it. I mean, he can. I understand where he would kind of like pop up and say a few things, but he, he actually really does engage with people, and like, even the people that are very negative, he's just like, "Well, no, like this is actually what it is," and it kind of just keeps going. <laughs> like, I'm like, if it was me, I would just be like, yeah, "Okay, well, no, I'm not dealing with this." But, <laughs> uh, yeah, gotta gotta give him props for actually, you know, sticking with it. Yeah, I mean he's uh, he, he's out there trying to be uh, uh, you know a true you know voice uh, in a lot of ways for uh, modern uh, and and be someone who does uh, yeah, actively support it in a lot of ways and, and tries to provide people like just straight facts and people sometimes just don't like that some people well, just don't like don't like facts and, and well, that's it, that is what it is. Yeah, I, I think in many ways, I mean, not just the, you know uh, an advocate for modern, but I mean he's really just the face of Star City in, in the open series. Mm. I mean he's um, he's much more involved than just being a commentator. Um, so, you know, coming from him, it's like okay, well, if he's saying that it's this, then you should probably believe it because he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and I will say when you, you say like people don't like facts, people don't like facts when it goes against their worldview. And that's, that's an actual like psychological, like imperative you can research. <laughs> you you may have seen a few Facebook threads over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. This is a, this not, offers not a even weird, related to magic. <laughs> like a really weird parallel to like modern politics, but it's true. Like once people have a worldview, the like facts that don't fit within it, that no longer fit the narrative for them. They don't listen to, and, and and again, so I don't say this to disparage your format. You know, I, it could very easily happen. You know, the modern's that way at some point. Standard has its dips, and these are the formats that I love. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like the format is hard to watch. The viewership shows you it's hard to watch, and that you know when you're talking about just advertising dollars that allows the open to exist, it, 
you can you can put put your fingers in your ears and that's fine, but just make sure you put like wastelands on each finger before you shove them in your ear. <laughs> yeah. But hey, the modern continues. <laughs> well, to that be... way they can use their legacy cards. <laughs> there you yeah. go. I made it vicious. I, there you go. I uh, was like, I, I, okay. I just want to have a use. <laughs> but modern continues to be the people's format, and the people show their love for it. So, and we continue to like it. And, you know, and if you don't like modern, that's fine. I don't. I don't think you have to like modern, but just I stop championing. Like stop. I. Don't I take it back? Don't stop cha- championing your format. Champion your format, but don't do it in a way that you come off as belligerent. Like nah, nah, nah. Legacy great. Legacy is king. Nah. Correct. Uh, because that does that does not do your do uh, you a service um, as a a, a player um, to uh, to to ignore you know uh, things that that are there. You know, appreciate your format, but don't um, don't be ignorant of things outside of your control that influence the format yeah and i'll just say this i mean i i played in the open this past weekend and and i talked to you know multiple players um just people you know opponents or people that were kind of around where i was sitting that you know literally said like oh you know legacy looks really cool but i don't want to buy into the format because you know it's just way too expensive and there just aren't that many events and it's just like not worth it so I mean, this isn't something that we're just making up. Like, right. <laughs> There's people know, literally pe- telling us this, though. People are are much more um, excited about buying into modern because they can actually play with their cards. And, yeah, yeah. And you you have uh, cards from standard that more easily translate. But I, I mean, what what are we even talking about? I mean, yeah. obviously, like the you know the next thing is going to be this this you know frontier format that uh, uh you know apparently <laughs> is the the new hotness. The Oregon Trail of formats. <laughs> I, I actually hope that doesn't catch on because it sounds awful to me. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you knew how you know you know how big you know uh, Tiny Leaders was, and then mm. that's not that's not a thing anymore. No one does that anymore. So uh, sad. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 people I, play Tiny Leaders all the time. If you put Tiny Leaders on camera, you'll get all the views. <laughs> people just don't understand Tiny Leaders, but they give them a chance. They will. <laughs> yep, you keep telling them that. And that'll plug my ears to two shoe <laughs> <laughs> Um, But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on this, see where it goes. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's there's there will be more, uh, you know, uh, things that, that happen with... Uh, Star City Games and other uh, you know tournament uh, organizers in the future that may uh, cause us to need to bring up the subject again, but uh, I think we can put it to rest for a little bit now. So, uh, um, before we head into our competitive segment of the show, I do want to give a shout out to uh, our lovely sponsor, Comic Town. Uh, uh, this Saturday, uh, November nineteenth, they're actually hosting a no ban list modern one uh, K Expo uh, event, uh, and this uh, we you know, will will be your chance to kind of. Uh, play one of the most degenerate uh, uh, possible formats that, that could possibly exist. <laughs> Not one of the most degenerate. <laughs> well, that would be it's... like the most degenerate format would be like no and no list like vintage, right? Yeah, but that's not a thing. Just to play everything you could ever think like, of. Like this is it's more broken than like vintage is right now. I would say it probably gives it a run for its money. Yeah. Um, mainly because the existence of mental mis- misstep being able, a playable, you know, card within the no ban list, uh, modern event. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, this will, you know, still qualify you for the end of the year, uh, you know, Comic Town Classic Series, uh, you know, championship event. Um, so this is a, a great way for you to, you know, play those busted cards and, um, still qualify for the, uh, you know, series final. Um, you can you know play with uh, things like Jace the Mind Sculptor, Skull Clamp, and uh, Ancestral, I mean Treasure Cruise. <laughs> um, but uh, this is going to be a tournament where you will need the actual cards, so it's it's not proxy. You know, this is uh, going to be something where you need to own the cards you're going to be playing. Well, not own them, but you know have the real cards. <laughs> no, no proxies is is what we're trying to say. Um, but that that is about it. I believe the tournament will start at ten, and then the uh, you know. Uh, Player registration will be at nine. Yeah, it's thirty dollar entry. Yeah, thirty dollar entry. Another important factor: how much does it cost? Thirty <laughs> cold hard buckaroos. Yeah, but in all honesty, I mean, this is a it's, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, it's a format that um, there aren't a whole lot of organized events for it. Uh, obviously, it's not a quote unquote real format since it's 
we're not, we're not using the ban list, but um, but yeah, I mean, if if you like playing uh, degenerate combo decks and uh, having turns decide in the first couple turns of the game, then uh, hey, go for it. Now, uh, I will say that there, uh, I believe it's Mox Boarding House uh, runs a lot of these events or, mm -hmm. or something like that. And um, if you look on, I think it might be the Magic Reddit or the Spikes Reddit on uh, Reddit, obviously, there was a recent posting of the uh, top eight or top 16 of their most recent event. So if you don't have any idea where to start uh, with this format, take a look there. And, uh, you know, kind of look what you uh, want to do and, and see. I, I will let you know that uh, there is a nearly manaless dredge deck that took second place. Huh. Uh, it has uh, eight. It either has four lands or eight lands. Oh, you can play Dread Return. Yes, correct. Mm. Correct. Uh, yeah. So it, it, if that's something you like doing in current modern, well, I may have good news for you. You may be able to continue the, the uh, dredge. Uh, thing and uh, make it even more broken. So, just get even closer to just playing like Legacy or Vintage Dredge. Yeah, blue blue red Delver. Uh, I'm not just saying this because I like Delver, but it's like actually just an unreal deck in this format. Yeah, you say that, but uh, I think uh, Jund actually won that tournament. Uh, with it was like Flare Jund, so uh, it, it, it's crazy. But it was a, a you know a good thing to uh, to find recently. Uh, I know not, none of us will be attending that that event, uh, mainly because we we don't want any part of, of that. We like we like bandless modern. We, <laughs> we like it, uh, you know, where it is currently, pretty much. So, but uh, we wish anyone that do uh, that does decide to uh, attend that uh, the best of luck, and uh, you know, the winner will uh, see Mike and Dave in the classic finals. Two finalists. Two finalists. So yeah, the other see two, both two, of you two slots up for grabs here. See both of you then. Yeah. Um, but that is uh, all for our Comic Town Minute. Uh, let's go on into the competitive segment. So, uh, first we're going to talk about GP with Rotterdam. Um, it was uh, won by... Uh, it was Team Sealed, like we, we said at the top of the show. It was won by um, Javier Dominguez, uh, Marcio Cavallo, and uh, Luis Savado. Mm. Not a shock there. Well, our draft master <laughs> wins again. We <laughs> just can't, can't, can't stop, won't stop, it turns yeah. out. No, but I mean, his his teammates are quite good as well. Javier Dominguez. Yeah, uh, I've we, I, I've heard of both of his teammates. Yeah. So Salvato had a Pro Tour top eight last last season. So. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we we say it time and time again. These team sealed events. I mean, the the cream usually does rise to the top, and um, I know the top four teams. I think three out of the four teams had a Hall of Famers on them. Um, we had a. Uh, Frank Carson's team, and I know PV. Uh, who did he team with? I think it was him. Sorry. It was Andre Strasky, Paul Vito Damodaros, and Shahar Shanhar were in the top four. Heck of a team there. And then uh, the other like super team was Raf Levy, Tom Harasido, and Jeremy Dazani, <laughs> which is kind of an odd Jeez. mix there, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, it was the like, two, two it, Frenchmen and a Japanese guy, but. Uh, I mean, they made it work, obviously. I mean, like, Dazani is on team um, Hararuya, I believe. Right. I wonder if there was a, a language barrier, though, because I don't think Saito speaks a lot of English. And, Doesn't uh, really need to. Magic's just a universal uh, language, Saito, Saito man. play this deck. It's, it's, it's true. Here, you play the aggro deck, Saito. Yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there was a... I, I didn't watch the, any of the coverage, but I did see a, a gif of... Um, I believe it was Andre Strasky had like a an expedition sword of light and shadow or something that he played on camera. And his <laughs> opponent high fived him. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, but there was, that that team sealed pool was disgusting. Like that. That's literally the only thing I heard even out of this GP over the weekend was like, "Hey, did you hear about PV's team sealed pool?" <laughs> so. I mean, team events really fun to play. Uh, not so great to watch, in my opinion. Uh, uh, no, but, but... Maybe if it was constructed, which we'll have a little bit of that this upcoming week with the World Magic Cup. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so um, moving on from the GP, let's let's talk about the you know, the, the main event, the, the, the bulk of the show, um, which is Star City Games Columbus. Uh, we were all in attendance, and um, 
It was what eight hundred players, something like that. I yeah. believe it was right around eight hundred. Or the cap was a thousand, so we were only two hundred off yeah. from cap, which yeah. is you know pretty pretty surprising. I mean, since they've had the caps, I don't think um, there have been moments where they've gotten close. But you know, this is just adds to the the, the list. But it, it it felt like there was a lot of people in that. You no, know, the, the room was buzzing. There were tons of people there. So uh, we unfortunately, Star City's website's doing the awkward thing where like the event coverage page is disappeared it will reappear later in the week <laughs> so we have deck lists but we can't look at like the exact number stuff we can't see the rounds so i, I know i had looked at the metagame breakdown at the time like when the the coverage was up and i believe infect was the most played deck on day two uh yes i, I like believe 11 that, or that, something is, like that. that is what i've heard um, that's not surprising i mean i think you could probably assume that that was the case but anyway so who won, Morgan? Uh, the tournament itself was uh, won by none other than Tom, the boss Ross. No, he he's been, been playing Infect. Yeah, right? he's been one of the really aggressive decks, right? Like, uh, I, I don't know what to say other than no, he was not. What was he playing? He was playing Green White Tron. Uh, the, I don't is, want to live on this planet. <laughs> this is the deck that he actually played a, I believe, a versus video with, um, like earlier in in November. Uh, so probably like the week or two before the actual tournament, and um, uh, so he he was kind of feeling out modern a little bit more, and uh, in, in honesty, especially with control decks, you know, kind of um, you know taking pretty good position um, last week to uh, two of them right showing up in the the top eight of the GP mm-hmm. uh, Tron. Uh, you know, it just has a, a better late game, uh, and <laughs> potentially it a, has the late game. <laughs> essentially, an earlier, an earlier late game than uh, you know the, the control decks can sometimes handle. So, um, it's not surprised that uh, it's in the hands of you know Tom Ross. You know, performed fairly well, and he was uh, almost undefeated for a large majority of of the tournament. I believe he was ten to zero at one point. Uh, he picked up a loss somewhere on day two, but uh, he only had one loss the whole weekend. Which is so. insane, just just pure yeah. insanity. Yeah, um, I think um, obviously Dredge has picked up a lot of steam in um, recent weeks, probably last month or so. Uh, it's been doing really well on Magic Online. You see it show up, you know, in all the live events uh, that are happening, and um, you know, he has uh, main deck relics, Relic of Progenitus. He's got Side War, Rest in Peace, and Ravenous Trap. So. He came well prepared for for Dredge, um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he beat up on Dredge a bunch throughout the tournament. I would still have questions about how well this deck does against something like Infect, but I, I think traditionally, like that, that uh, is obviously the worst matchup for for a deck like Tron. Mm-hmm. Um, now he he does have ways to to fight uh, the 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 menace that is uh, Infect for the for this deck. You know, he has Warping Whales. Um, he has uh, special contortions. Yeah, um, I mean, Path to Exile is, is path, a, it's a little bit better than Bolt. You know, if you're running like Green Red Tron uh, with Bolts, I think Path is, you know, no matter how many pump spells they have, you know, outside of, uh, you know, Vines of Vastwood mm-hmm. or whatever, like it's going to be able to to kill like something that gets become immense, for example. I honestly think his his best tool that he he had against uh, something like Infect is Bless Alliance. Um, making uh, your in fact opponent or your death shadow opponent uh, probably a notable bad matchup for this deck um, have to sacrifice their one giant creature if they you know aren't playing around it um, definitely probably got them out of some tricky situations in all honesty um, those decks they are very aggressive decks but typically don't have a, uh, a lot of multiple attacking creatures um, so I think that that could be a card that I know was very popular on, on the day. Uh, a lot of vendors sold out of Blessed Alliances, um, and, and could not provide them to the, the players that uh, so desperately needed them. <laughs> the, the needy players. <laughs> and, um, so I really feel like that, that is another card that has kind of, you know, shown itself as being a, uh, a modern, uh, you know, powerhouse in, you know, at least in sideboards, which sometimes if you're a standard card, that's, that's all you can really aspire to. But no shame in, in having it in the main deck. Um, I know that uh, one of uh, the, the uh, Northeastern players definitely was playing a, a blue-white uh, control deck that was just jamming some Blessed Alliances. So, um, But yeah, this, this deck is, uh, is awesome. It definitely feels like this was 
the anti one of one of the better anti dredge decks. You know, they they can play rest in peace without having to to worry about too much of anything except for your your world breakers, which you know that's a little bit of awkwardness. In but, that matchup, it's like whatever. Anyway. Yeah, who they're, cares? They're not going to kill it, so. right? <laughs> and um. then um, uh, you know, just having those those powerful you know uh, sideboard cards really did you know allow them to uh, to do number. Now, I think. Based on um, how this deck is set up, I wonder how they do against uh, Affinity, maybe? I mean, he beat uh, Rob Cucanato in the top four, yeah. who's a really good Affinity player. Yeah, he is a GP so. top eight last year and uh, is uh, sort of a master with the deck. So, so I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't actually get to see that match, um, but I think he beat him fairly handily. Fair enough. So Well... Answers uh, my question. To that point, I haven't seen what card Rob's going to eat this week yet. Um, <laughs> that's sort of his thing. If you uh, follow him on any sort of social media, uh, whatever card he like loses to, he, he has he has like destroyed and chewed like multiple foil like stony silences and such in the past. So it's very cathartic for him to just <laughs> annihilate <laughs> see, see. cards that he lost to. So that's interesting because the last time I played against him, I was playing uh, Grixis Del. This is at a GP. <clears throat> And I was playing Grixis Delver, and he was playing Affinity, of course, and he got me with a Warship, which I was like out of nowhere, because what Affinity deck plays Warship? <laughs> so I guess I would have been eating a Warship if I were doing that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would I would have loved to eat a Warship after that, because that was, that was kind of tilting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, I mean, it's fibrous. It works. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it's always yeah, fun I, to see those pictures pop up where it's like, ah, Purging the hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so what else uh, shows up here in the in the in the top eight that we want to talk about? Um, I, I mean, honestly, pretty big names. Yeah, it was a stacked top eight. Yeah. So we already talked about uh, Mr. Kukunato. Uh We have uh, uh, Kevin Jones, uh, uh, participant T- in the yeah. upcoming World of Magic Cup. Yeah, Team USA member. Team USA member. Yes, playing uh, Grixis Delver. Yeah, she, he must have been. You must have been so happy, Dave. I, I was happy, but also sad that I didn't play Grixis Delver in this tournament. It's true. Uh, you had um, Ben Weinberg playing Burn. Uh, you had uh, Adam Franzi. He's uh, done fairly well for himself uh, in the uh, um, Star City Games circuit. Um, definitely a lesser known name, but I always feel like I yeah, see him somewhere. I, I heard that, yeah, I've seen that name before. I, I couldn't put a face to the name, but... Um. Uh, he was playing Bantaldrazi, and then you also had Dan Musser um, also playing Bantaldrazi. And then lastly, uh, we had uh, uh, Ty Anderson playing Jund. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when we look at this top eight, uh, something we don't see is, in fact, even though it was the most represented day two deck, um, we also only see, you know, Bantaldrazi being the deck that shows up twice. So, you know, a, a fairly diverse format, at least top eight wise. Real quick, before we get too far away, how many top eights do you think Todd Anderson has on the Open Series? I have no idea. Is it 20 yet? 30. What? What? <laughs> 30. That's insane. That's an insane number. <laughs> yeah, that's just completely absurd. But um, I suppose if that's what you do with most of your weekends, it, it should be a high number. Yeah, they were saying, um, so Todd Anderson, unfortunately for him, was paired up against Tom Ross. So it was Jund against uh, Green White Tron, which... It's not great for Jund, and Tony nope. Anderson is also running no um, no hate, so he doesn't have any Fulminator Mages in the sideboard or any kind of, uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, crumble to Dust? Mm. Uh, yeah. Didn't have anything like that, uh, but they're saying, you know, before they faced off, I think Tom Ross has something like 12 or 16 top eights, so they're like, yeah, like between the two of these players, they have more top eights than all the, everybody else combined. <laughs> but it's not like the rest of the top eight was like a pushover either. Right, right, a lot, right. A lot of really good players. So it's just it's crazy. But, um, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the, the top eight was, again, you know, full, full of names and um, full of different decks, in all honesty. Like, uh, Really had a, a you know a good smattering of a, kind of what you could really play. The other thing, like the, the closest thing, I guess, is to the control deck would be Green White Tron. Um, when you really look at it, we don't have anything else. Um, Grixis Delver kind of gets close, but it's still more aggressive. Um, um yeah, I, I would say it's it's probably more on the control side. 
it, it, it's it kind of jundish. Yeah, it is. It is definitely you know going to be um, a bit slower than the the hyper aggressive. I feel like yeah. we 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 don't really have like uh, I guess the aggressive deck in this format would be even like Banto Drazi because even then, but they even slide into mid range. So you don't really have like an aggressive deck. You have hyper aggressive decks. So you have you turn <laughs> yeah. them kill decks. Yeah. You have like death shadow and, you know, in fact, I mean, sometimes regular zoo still shows up. Like that, that's, yeah. your, that's an aggressive affinity, deck. Affinity is, yeah, yeah, so uh, affinity affinity still... is like the slow, like the, the slower of the hyper aggressive <laughs> decks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the, the grandfather. Like, yeah. aggressive deck. like you guys go too fast. Sometimes you got to slow down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can come on turn three. You got to wait till turn four. <laughs> 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 hey, Affinity can sometimes kill on turn three. Yeah, I've, I've Some, done that before. Sometimes. Sometimes Grandpa gets a little pep in his step. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, you mentioned all the, the names in the top eight. Um, you even have some names just outside of the top eight. You have Connor Bowman. Yeah, uh, shout out to Connor. Ninth uh, with Dredge. Uh, you have Kyle Bogamus playing uh, Just Guy Flash, kind of a Just Guy mid range deck there. Dan Jessup um, Playing Jeskai Aggro. Now I know him and his his brother have been playing Infect for a while, so it's kind of an interesting choice there for him. Uh, Bernie Wen playing Grixis Control. I believe he was playing the exact seventy five from um, Burkhart. Uh, yeah, Corey Burkhart's uh, Grixis Control list the week before uh, mm. from GP Dallas, and uh, Jacob Baugh, who's uh, you know still still going strong on the Open Series here with a, <laughs> a 15th place finish for him playing Dredge. Yeah, that's kind of the deck that he's you know been playing for a while now in modern so yeah i i have to say that the jessica aggro deck it still looks just like the the, the most fun thing you could you know, probably be playing uh in this in this format uh but i only say that because it plays four manus rider and man that card i like it i like it a lot <laughs> yeah now the the knock on manus rider and modern has always been oh well it dies to bolt but this deck is for mutagenic growth so yeah. it's kind of like who cares yeah that's the we bolt. Can counter that bolt i ain't afraid i ain't yeah. scared of no bolt yeah, this list, um, I know Jim Davis also played this list. I think they played the exact 75. And he finished just outside of the top 16, I believe. And um, we, uh, Jim Davis was on camera a few times. Um, yeah, that deck, deck is definitely interesting. Um, I don't... It's totally something that I would play, but I don't actually think I'd play this exact deck. <laughs> <laughs> Someone would have to sell you on the on the merits of it, I feel like. There's yeah, some, uh, there's some things that uh, seem seem a little weird, but I, the, the I just see guides continue to strike me as something where it's like I just don't know if that's what I want to be doing. I just see Manus Rider. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like theoretically, all of your all, all of your threats have have haste or pseudo haste since you can you know flash in a Snapcaster Mage because <laughs> that's what you want to be doing with them. But um, um, I, I think that's kind of the idea of the of the the, the deck is that it's a uh, you know, a slower, more, um, a little, a little bit slower of a, of, a, of an aggressive deck where they're, you're attacking with your creatures and then, you know, your, your late game is just burning people out. So, well, it, it's, it's an aggressive deck that can also play some disruption. I mean, you see four spell pierce in the sideboard. So against anything, um, you know, combo, combo E, um, or even against something like infect, you can, like like against Infect, for example, like you can actually play the you play as a control deck because you have so much removal. I yeah. And you have the you know four bolts, four lightning helix, uh, even like four vapor snag. Like vapor snag is awesome against Infect. Um, then you even have gut shot and path to exile on the sideboard. So it's like, how does Infect ever beat this this deck? I don't I don't really know. Well, I'll take that back. Infect can beat anything really <laughs> with the right draw, but it's going to have a really hard time against this deck. We'll just say that. Um, but yeah, th this kind of deck definitely struggles against like bolt, uh, like I, like I would I would think against like like a Jeskai control, yeah, um, or Grixis control or like Jund, it might have some issues. Yeah, and, and that's where you're, you're going to typically see aggressive decks sort of have have issues anyway. So right, um, one other thing I just want to point out on this is uh, you see the full four Spire Bluff Canal and also four four full four Inspiring, inspiring vantage. vantage in this. So. Um, the mana base on this deck definitely got souped up with uh, with Kaladesh there, um, and because he's running, um, you know, the eight uh, fast, lands. fast lands there, you don't have you not you don't really have to run as many of the fetches and shocks. I mean, you still see some here, but not as many uh, as you might have expected. I think it's only six fetch lands, and like three shock lands, so yeah. taking less damage off your your lands. Um, 
So, I mean, that's that's something that definitely helps out against decks like Burn. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree with that. It's uh, it's unfortunate that it's, it, it is like the four fetch lands are like four scalding tarns, and you're like, well, dang it. <laughs> Um, it's the only one I play. <laughs> well, hundred percent of the time, not, not all of us are, are uh, as fortunate as you to have just four scalding tarns hanging hanging around. I, I put them <laughs> to good use. So, it's... day in and day out, my scalding tarns work harder than anyone mm-hmm. else's scalding tarns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like uh, Dave's scalding tarns are like the uh, the bullets from the, uh, the the cartoon gun. Have you ever seen a? Who friend Roger Rabbit? So he just like opens up the case. It's like, all right, boys, here we go. And they're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Time to find some sting vents. What, what deck are we going in this week? It doesn't matter. It's going to have Scald and Tarn in it. <laughs> I'm going to have turn one Delvers. <laughs> uh, happy little Scalding Tarn. Happy. Uh, I'm going to put a little Scalding Tarn here. Mm. Mm, nice. That's nice. <laughs> Um, anything else from, from modern that we want to, you know, touch on that we want to speak about? Um, I think we don't have the day to, uh, break down, uh, with us at the moment, but there were 20 something decks, 20 different kind of archetypes represented in day two, which is, you know, great to see. Yeah. Infect was still, um, number one. I, I do want to point out, so go to, uh, was it 31st? So I remember looking at the breakdown before we could still see it. There were three copies of sun and moon in the, in day two and this one top yeah. 32 would um, and I thought it was interesting, you know, that there, some of these prison decks are getting a little more, uh, uh, prevalent, um, but <laughs> Sun and Moon, uh, where, where, where's the, where's the card at? So, yeah, it's referring to Blood Moon, Thank of you. course, and the Sun being the Plains symbol. <laughs> the oh, sun being uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, not the actual... It's not running Wheel of Sun and Moon. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was doing at first, I was like, I'm gonna, like what are we no, doing here? No, um, yeah, it's a, it's a white red prison deck. But uh, it was just a lot of hate. But there are three of them in day two, and you had a yeah. bunch of lanterns show up, and like, like I don't know how you peg modern. I just don't know how you do it. It's like, oh, it's really yeah. aggressive. It's like, yeah, and then you like lose to like this. It, well, it, it makes sense to see. You mentioned lantern. It makes sense to see that deck kind of still, or, or I guess making a comeback because we haven't seen it too much. Because it actually does get a couple things from Kaladesh. I mean, you get the. Um, uh, you get the the black green fast land, yeah, you get uh, fast which is lands. pretty good in there, and then you also get Inventor's Fair, which is actually quite good in that deck. <laughs> yeah, and um, um, you, uh, I mean, uh, I I know that um, Chion was uh, playing a list with Glint Nest Crane. Yep, Glint yeah. Nest Crane. Yeah, it's hot. So yeah, the that the deck definitely saw a lot of uh, little little upgrades that definitely yeah. make it a, a a bit more of a contender, which I can't stand. Can't can't stand that deck. I hate that yeah. deck. I, I wish mean, it didn't exist in the format, only if, because I hate it. Not necessarily any like constructed reason as to why that deck isn't good, other than I just don't like it existing. Like, nobody actually wants to play against that deck, I'm pretty sure. I, I, Maybe yeah. if you're playing Burn, you're like, oh, okay, sure. I, but, I mean, if you're playing Tron, you're probably like, yeah, I'll play against that deck, because you have inevitability a lot of the time. You have a lot of uh, permanents that say uh, get rid of uh, target permanent. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what, once you get locked down, though, it's just it's so miserable. But in any case, uh, <laughs> it it definitely got some tools from from Kaladesh. We'll we'll just say that. But I agree. Ruben um, Bresler was a, a you know notable name that was there playing mm-hmm. the Lantern Control deck and, and was on camera a few times. So and it's funny because it, a lot of the pros that have played it, um, I know. Uh, am I thinking of? I think PV played it at the GP. Mm-hmm. I know that and I know Chion did. Chion, uh, did, uh, Chion played it, um, or he has been streaming with it. Um, Matt Sperling picked it up, I think, with like zero testing, and he like top 16 in GP or something <laughs> like that. Um, they say it's fun to play. It's like, maybe it's fun for you. Yeah, but I mean, like, your there's, opponents. there's a lot of modern decks that's like, oh, this is fun for me. This is not fun for you, though. Yeah, no. Um, but going back to the Sun and Moon deck, I know uh, Todd Stevens has been playing this a lot, and you know he's a player that typically gets a decent amount of camera time. So you know he had a couple feature matches playing it, and uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this deck. Um, it's kind of you know it's one of those you know it's prison deck, so you know you have things like uh, Blood Moon as we already mentioned, um, which. Against a lot of decks, I mean, it's going to do some good work, but there are some decks where it doesn't really do anything. Um, Four Chalice of the Void, 
kind of same thing, you know, some decks it's going to shut down, some decks it doesn't. So, you know, really the problem with these decks are, you know, if you draw the wrong half of the hate against whatever decks you're playing against, it doesn't really do anything. Um, I agree. Uh, something this deck, uh, I definitely got, uh, like, it, again, this was on uh, either on social media of some persuasion, but uh, someone was playing against uh, a, a deck like this online, and they went uh, turn one, um, white producing land, uh, spirit guide, spirit guide, spirit guide, Nahiri. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I guess that is the thing you could do in that deck, but uh, uh, you probably only get to do that you know, once in every, uh, you know, Blood Moon. Yes, once in yeah. every Blood Moon. Once every Super Moon. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, that's a terrible thing that can happen to modern, apparently, <laughs> uh, which I would not want to happen to me. Uh, turn one of a of a of a game, but hey, if you want to do that, th this is your avenue. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at uh, John Pellman's list here. He finished 31st. He has two two main deck leyline of sanctity. It's like that's that's just hateful, man. That's just yeah, that's rude. That is rude right there. <laughs> but again, if you don't have it in your opening hand, then you draw that. You're like, oh, this is just the stone worst. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just can't imagine like shuffling up, getting ready for game one, and like uh, uh, actions before the game starts, and you're like. <laughs> yeah, what is going on right now? He's like Leyline. You're there like, why? Yeah. Um, this is also a deck that has it has a lot of board control element, elements, and you know, in addition to kind of the lock pieces, so it has things like main deck Wrath of God, and Anger of the Gods. You know, runs both of those. Main know, deck El Elspeth, Sun Champion. That's yeah, a good, that, that's a pretty good board control card. A lot right. of Planeswalkers in general. Yeah, you get Elspeth, Sun Champion. You get. Origi you know the original Gideon, uh, Gideon Jura, you got Nahiri's, you got Johnny Vengeant. You know. These yeah. all do do good work. I mean, they're <laughs> a good way to to kind of clean up the game once you get control, and you know, and some of them even let you gain control. So I think this deck is like the the greatest hits album you see like when you're watching TV at like two in the morning. It's like six six uh, dis <laughs> sorry six uh, dis collection all the hits. <laughs> Gideon Jura, we got Gideon Jura. Yeah, we got Johnny Vengeant. We got it. Blood because Moon, so, Wrath of God, we got so, it. So does this mean that like all the the, the Boros Planeswalkers are like the 80s hair metal band? Oh, yeah, magic? absolutely. <laughs> and it's all power ballads. It's all power oh, ballads. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, we even have like Chandra, the Torch of Defiance in the, in the sideboard. Um, <laughs> she's like she's like tail end of the 80s uh, you know, hair metal band. She's Lita Ford. <laughs> there, there she's Lita go. Ford. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad that we did this. I'm glad that we could have the 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 Boros Planeswalker uh, hair metal greatest collection. Have I closed my eyes forever? <laughs> down, 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 down. And it's, it's just like, oh, Blood Moon. <laughs> <laughs> they all drink it from their chalices. <laughs> so, 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 Mike, as the resident Boros guy, what do you think of this deck? Uh, I wouldn't play it. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, if it was like Boros, like mediocre creatures and burn spells. Oh yeah, then I'm in. And, and Stormbreath dragons. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think over it. I uh, I'm not a huge fan of the the Blood Moon Chalice decks. Like they can be really powerful, but like I, I play like I play next to a number of these decks. The Mardu versions have been pretty popular as well. The, playing like Liliana as well. Uh, less Chal or less Blood Moon, but still the similar idea. Like attack your hand, lock you out of certain spells. They have no card advantage though. You know what I mean? Like, you have some selection with Nahiri, but you have no actual card advantage, so it's really easy to get, like, Thoughtseize out of a game, or honestly, just get locked out in an early turn by, you know, by some interaction, and then all of your cool spells are just worthless. So, um, I, I agree with you. It's, you know, you draw the wrong half of your deck, or you draw the hate card that isn't good, or you drew, like, you know, three Blood Moons in a game, you didn't have any way to get rid of all of them, <clears throat> like... For a, for a format like modern, it just feels like it doesn't compete in the same way other decks do. So it can certainly do well, but it 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 needs help to do well. Yeah, I I agree with that. I mean it 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 has a place, and you know there there are certainly people that like to play these style of decks. Um, I'm definitely not one of them, so you'll never catch me playing this. But um, it is something to be aware of because it's semi semi new on the scene, I guess. Uh, I guess the idea of it really isn't, but this specific you know red white version of it is something that seems like it's picking up in popularity. So. Sure. Yeah, it's like just seeing three copies of that just like in, the, in day two, just like, yeah, it's just like oh, where, where has this been? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, Jeff Hoagland finishing in thirty second with Kiki Cord. So we saw him take down the modern. Classic last week. week before. Yeah. Um, he did. Uh, Tom Ross did pass him for the Player of the Year uh, since he won. You know, Tom Ross won the tournament. 
Um, Jeff Hoagland did pick up some points for his 32nd place finish, but uh, he's got some work to do. Um, we have one more open and then the last Invitational before the Players' Championship, I believe. So um, Hoagland's got some work to do here, but I don't. I believe Tom Ross is sitting out the open this upcoming weekend, so he could uh, definitely make up some ground there in Knoxville. Yeah, for sure. So I I like how far he just keeps taking these decks too. Like he's up to two collective brutalities in the main of his Naya deck ostensibly. <laughs> so yeah. whatever. Yeah, you can add black off of his murmuring <laughs> bosk that he could search for with any of his green fetch lands. Uh it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I have played against Oakland playing this deck and it is kind of infuriating. <laughs> like it's just like it's, what? just just have everything, huh? Just I don't know. I guess that's that's the whole point of it. It's you know it's like a toolbox deck, but he's apparently the only person that could do well with it. This is, you know. Yeah, weird. but again, that goes back to the knowing your deck, knowing oh, yeah. knowing your deck, knowing how to attack the format. Absolutely. I like a sideboard as well. Like I think Ghostly Prison, like is the card I was running in the the Giftstron deck there, and it's it does so much work against a lot of this format. Like something like Death Shadow. Like if you if you land that against Death Shadow, especially on turn two. You know, that's there's not a lot they could do. The same is true for Affinity. You know what I mean? They have to work really hard to get all in on one thing, and it's a lot easier to deal with one threat. You know, when they have to pay all, almost all their mana to attack with one threat. So we'll just circle back around to that card that we talked about before, Bless Alliance. So <laughs> you kind of walk them right into that yeah, Bless Alliance by, that's by true. doing that. That's absolutely true. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but but the yeah, this is uh, you know pretty awesome to see. Um, Modern was great. Um, None of, none of us really had great tournaments, though, as we have uh, not not we did not start the uh, the, the discussion talking about us. Um, uh, many of us went uh, the 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 old X and three and either stayed in the tournament or dropped from the tournament. So, do, do you want to at least talk about what we played? Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about that a little bit. I played at nauseum, and it, it was a good time. Uh, we started off the day um, going. Uh, we started the day playing against. <laughs> Um, uh, no bloom amulet titan, and uh, just getting raffle stomped uh, uh, in game three. Uh, guy had like the the nuttiest of nut hands, and uh, yeah, I I wasn't beating that in any way, shape, or form. Do you happen to remember who that was that you played against? It wasn't. There, there it was, was a guy that had it wasn't Ed Edgar. It was not Edgar. Edgar. Uh, uh, I can't say his last name, but Edgar M. Um, it was not him. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I believe that they were playing pretty much the same exact list. Um, and I've played against that list before. Uh, a local player, uh, Michael Salem, plays that uh, list in Modern. And also beat me while, whilst I was playing at Nauseam. So I was, uh, I was expecting it. <laughs> um, and uh, then I got to play Burn, and, um, which isn't uh, necessarily uh, a great matchup. But you have Leyline in, in, in the sideboard. Uh, but my Burn opponent definitely beat me through... Uh, Leyline and Phyrexian Unlife, mind you. Oof. So uh, that's brutal. I know I've played Burn uh, a, a fair amount of my own, and I've done that to someone else. So I I, I now know what that feels <laughs> what goes like. Around, comes around. I now know what that feels like on both sides. Um, uh, but but Burn, he he got to uh, get out too early. Um, uh, uh, Idolon of the Great Revels, and those are uh, those are pretty brutal, especially when I just was not doing anything at all on my side. So he just and he had a, oh he had a Goblin Guide, so he just like hit me for six a bunch, and I died. So, mm. uh, but then I, I got to to rattle off uh, some wins uh, after that. Um, my my next round opponent uh, was playing the um, Green Red Titan uh, Breach deck, and um, I, I I believe that he was he was fairly new uh, with the deck. Uh, I, I got to uh, win my my game three uh, because he did not pay for his uh, green packed trigger. So <laughs> it seems like he should probably be advantaged in that, right? Uh, They're just kind of faster than they are, right? They were, sometimes, if they breach out a titan on on, turn, on their on, on the play turn five, you might you might not have um, had enough time to go off yet. It, it depends. It, it's a race, basically. Hmm. Um, like you have cards that are that are pretty good. Um, like you have. Leyline of Sanctity again that pretty much shuts down like a, a lot of the damage their deck can do. <laughs> um, but uh, that uh, was how I won that that game three, and then I played against uh, Tron, and that's a buy. Um, <laughs> he did he did uh, go go on the play. He did go natural Tron. Well, I think he he got his he got Tron on turn three, and then played Karn and, and just exiled all my permanents because <laughs> he w he had three Karns. Uh, he had two or three Karns basically. So it was just like oh. I had uh, I had no hope. Um, at all. 
<laughs> yeah, the uh, the stone rain every turn. Pretty much, rain. yeah, nice, yeah, basically, and um, so I got to 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 win that the next round, and I beat um, another deck, but then I lost, and then uh, at X and three I, I dropped, which was a smart move because X and three did not day two, um, and I know Mike <laughs> Mike had a, a a worse off tournament than I did. <clears throat> uh, I started fine. I beat Infect, though I did lose game two to thought like my opponents become immense. And then they topped up a couple minutes. Oh, you like, caught it. You caught it for me. <laughs> I caught the you, Dave. You, you did have a couple of my cards in your deck, so that's probably what it was. I did. Through, um, I didn't lose to any become events in the tournament. So. Uh, so I played against Infect, beat Infect, played against Affinity, and like got, got game one pretty easily. Game two, kept a one lander with a lot of cyclers and just could not hit the second land and died very slowly and painfully. Game three, my, my I had an okay hand. It was a little, I had two, one more land that I would have wanted, but I had the combo. My opponent mulligan to six and proceeded to go, I, you know, you know I, I'm on the play. So I'm like, turn one, guy, go. He goes, turn one, guy, opal, blast your guy, play second opal, thought sees you, take your become immense, and then next turn, draw a land to play as that champion. And it was it was literally like, and that's exactly like, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is actually the best six i've ever seen i almost won the game it's a, it was a very it was a slog because he didn't have much on the board but i i just i never drew another real pump spell and couldn't get through so mm. then i played against burn twice and uh i drew three death shadows two or th two of them in one game across six games against burn so yeah that's always the key <clears throat> to that matchup it really is. Um, and, and once I picked up my third loss, I wasn't sure that X and 3 wasn't going to day 2, but I, I really didn't have... I, I knowing what the room was, I just didn't want to slog through the rest of the day, and I, and I dropped, you know. That, that's, you know I, I like the deck. I think Death Shadow can still beat pretty much any deck, but sometimes you hit the other side, you know, and it happens. So uh, yeah. I did I did 3-0 a draft after that to make myself feel better. Nice. <laughs> and, then we, so, and then we cubed that night. It was we did. great. It was, it was sweet. So. It was amazing. It turned out to be an okay day, but not a great open. Yeah. Not a great open, unfortunately. So, so, Michael, I'll ask you this. So, I mean, I know uh, I, I was playing Death Shadow for a little while, and you, you've been playing it for a little bit, bit as well. Like, how, how do you feel? Um, do you like it in the current metagame? Um, do you think it was just, like, just a bad tournament? or? Do you I, think, I, think it was a, I think it was definitely a, a bad tournament. Uh, I think it's a little less favorable in the metagame than it was before. You're not going to get the free wins that you would have had even, like, a month or two ago. Um, and it may be right to just move away from it for a little bit because... Yeah, you, again, you made you know burn has made a resurgence, and like burn is still a tough matchup. But you also have a, a ton of these um, you know chalice decks hanging around too. So I think oh, yeah, I and think, blood moon yeah, <laughs> and blood moon if they can catch you, then it, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think like now just based on the way the format works, like it's just now it's going to be a meta game call. So whereas I think before you could have just blindly played it, and like and I did just blindly play it a number of tournaments and crushed. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it's not as well positioned as it was before. Yeah, I, I just asked because I know that um, at the in GP Dallas, there were a lot of people playing it. Didn't seem to do that well. Um, and even in this tournament, um, didn't seem to be as popular as it has been. Um, and we, we really didn't see any finishing in the it, top, you know. It, it fits a similar space as Infect, but it's not as robust as Defense, or as Defense, as Infect as... Uh, in, in the sense that it can protect itself. I was actually playing two Blossoming Defense uh, in the 75, which were pretty good. Um, and in both burn matchups, had I drawn it, it would have been, <laughs> been the difference. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, so, you know, Infect can just protect its combo a little bit better than Death Shadow can. And, De you know, we're seeing you know, a lot more paths right now. Obviously, a ton of Terminates. Um, so you just got to follow where the format goes. Right, right. <clears throat> um so I'll finish up here. So I, I, I will say I was not expecting to go to, to the open, <laughs> um, obviously because uh, I just had a child a week ago, but um, I was able to figure out a way to <laughs> to go. It, since it was local, I think if it was anywhere other than you know downtown Columbus, I would not have been in attendance. But um, you know, I, I I do love modern, so I kind of made some deals with my wife on that one <laughs> to, to be able to go. Uh, I ended up playing. Um, Deck I, I kind of fairly recently picked up was um, Ryochi Tomada's um, Just Guy Thing in the Ice Ascension deck, um, which uh, is basically just a ton of cantrips, um, Pyromancer's Ascension, Thing in the Ice, and you pretty much win by either getting a quick Thing in the Ice uh, transformed or you get Ascension online and just cast multiple Lightning Bolt, essentially. Um, so it plays a little bit like a Storm deck sometimes. Um, 
I don't know. It, it, it's a lot of fun. I thought it was an interesting deck. Um, definitely like a like a sweet deck. <laughs> like, um, ended up uh, I beat Burn in round one. I lost a really close one to Merfolk in round two. Um, I think I, I beat Infect, I believe, in, in round three. Lost to Burn. No, I lost to Grixis Control, which that match was very frustrating because it went to game three and, and really in that matchup, like if you're able to resolve uh, a Pyromancer Ascension, they pretty much have no way to remove it outside of uh, an engineered explosives or like possibly a cryptic command. Um, but basically if you stick an Ascension, you're in really good shape. And like game three, he had three pinpoint removal spells that he cast at the exact right time to like hit all my threats. So <laughs> it ended up being like a long game, but I was never able to really present any kind of threat because he would like he thought sees me on turn one when I had you know, when I had Ascension and then I drew a thing in the ice and then like I had probed him so I knew his hand and then he top deck and in position because like take my thing in the ice. And then later in the game he had, you know, cast a Vendillion click in my draw step after I had drawn an Ascension. <laughs> like it was like absurd. I was just like, You gotta be kidding me right now. Um, and then I ended up uh, really getting knocked out of the tournament by uh, just a, kind of a standard Naya burn deck, which um, he beat me after I resolved three lightning helixes and uh, rest for the weary for a full eight. <laughs> okay. So. Seems absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the Ascension deck is it's fun. I, I, I'm probably not going to be playing it too much going forward. It's. It's definitely good, but it can be a little inconsistent just because your threat density is so low. Um, there are a lot of games where, like, you cast a lot of cantrips, but you're not really doing anything. You're just kind of spinning your wheels. Um, on the flip side, it does have the ability to be, like, pretty explosive. You know, you can do a turn two thing in the ice, flip it on turn three, and just put them on a really fast clock. But it's just a little too inconsistent for my liking. So I don't know what I'm going to go with going forward. Oh, the, yeah, you know, we, we don't we don't really have to worry about. Like, I have to worry about modern for the invitational, but we're not really until December to have to look look at it again. So right, right. I I did end up winning out. I uh, went six and three on day one, but not even six and three wasn't even close to making day two for this one. You know, it was eight hundred plus tournament. players. Yeah, I, I finished up somewhere in the hundred and sixtieth range, um, even at you know six and three. So. It's a little frustrating for me, knowing that six you know X three record could still cash. I don't know. I don't know if we've talked about this on here, but like the fact that Star City makes it X—it's an X and two cutoff, um, unless you know if it's, it's small enough to where an X and three is top sixty-four. Um, and it's just frustrating to you know see people that have top eighted with X and three records, but you can't day two with an X and three record. I disagree with you. I think it's good. Okay. All right. So there you go. I just think it's weird that they've. Emulated the GP formatting in every way except for that. Yeah, but GPs have struggled to find events that stick on Sundays or that people want to do. Uh, Star City no. has not struggled with that, and they well, want people to play in their classics. I, no, I understand that. I mean, I understand why they do it and why they wouldn't roll that back because, yeah, they obviously would make more money by getting people to not play in day two because, you know, and sink more money into playing in classics. <laughs> I get it. Um, it's just a little frustrating to, to still technically be in contention for top eight. Um, or at least winning money and not having the ability to do that. I, I think that's I, it's understandable, but the flip, the flip side of that is that <clears throat> like then the person who went seven and two then gets a loss and gets paired against a, a random X three like someone who was an I don't know a hundred in some place and gets their breakers ruined for the rest of the day because they're getting punished because more people got in day two. You know what I mean? And that happens consistently with people's breakers. Like if you're if you're the person in seven and two and then you're like oh, close to auto caching day two, which has happened a couple of times for myself. Like I I'd, I'd much I feel like I did I did what I need to do to get to this point for caching i'm not worried about the extra 40 people who if they go undefeated on the next day can make it in the top eight so and i think you've seen for the random person like you've seen people like that at gps but for anybody who's actively trying to make money it's been awful like no one prizes at gps anymore so i'm fine with star city being like hey if you day two this you're probably going to prize like i am fine with sticking with that structure okay I mean, I, I, I don't like that, but I could understand why why people would. You just want to play more. I get it. Who doesn't want to play wanna, more? I just want to play my sweet deck, man. But 
the argument is if you want to play your sweet deck more, play win, better. Win enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I, I don't even think it wasn't even necessarily that I played bad. I got, I got a little unlucky in a couple of matches. That, well, like, like, get luckier. All my losses. Wait, wait my, you played Magic? Yeah. That, that's all I have to say to you. You played Magic? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did, did you hear what I played against? I can recount the story. No. It's, it's, it's quite fine. short. <laughs> it, it happens fine. sometimes. I yeah. play, I did play four rounds and only played like 50 minutes worth of Magic, so that was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, I, I think like out of all of us, I was always the last one. I know you, like I went to like, you know, see how you guys were doing. You guys were was somewhere else. <laughs> Where did the table that you were assigned to? Um, <laughs> Hey, but. I was assigned to that draft, and I 3 would it. <laughs> it was a sweet draft. I had Cloud Blazer in my deck. You did. Was, was that great. a good card? It's real It's real good. Yeah. Life-gaining Mold Drifter. It's great. <laughs> Pulling in the biggest cotton. <laughs> um, so, uh... That's pretty much it for the the, the modern open. We we did, of course, have a uh, a classic. It was won by uh, Jack Kiefer uh, playing uh, Blue White Flash, and um, you know, taking a look at you know the top eight, we do have uh, you know multiple copies of, of Blue White Flash show, you know showing up. Um, we we also have you know Green Black Delirium, um, Abzan Delirium, which is you know of course just a, another flavor. Uh, I imagine I haven't actually seen what the uh, the white in the, the the deck is necessarily even for. Um, but it's like we have uh, Avacyn, Avacyn, Gisela, um, Decoration in Stone, Anguish uh, on Making. Yeah, uh, you know this is more of a, a heavier uh, you know, splash than I was even expecting necessarily. You know this is more definitely. Uh, Ooh, with all these lancers. Yeah. Run, yeah, it runs uh, eight creature lands as well. So four Hissing Quagmire and four Shambling Vents. That's true. So. You see the, the, the Gaunty Lord of Luxury in the sideboard as well? Oh, Jeez. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I it's guess got you got to make your... really those leather couches and... <laughs> you you got to make those... Uh, got to make those Thalia's Lancers worth it, right? Absolutely. That's totally... A, that's a worthy target, I think. <laughs> the the Lord of Luxury, <laughs> yeah. Um, Got to hear Cletus. The now, Lord of Luxury is in town. <laughs> I do want to know all of the finest silks. He comes in with his his cane and. <laughs> if you if you do look at the nine through sixteen list, uh, sixteen lists, um, it's definitely just blue eye flash and, and uh, black green delirium, and then one wow. teamer energy deck. <laughs> Sweet format, man. Um, uh, the top eight is a little bit more diverse. You do have this uh, a blue red uh, control deck uh, that that we can take a look at, piloted by um, Andy uh, Hugh Hewen Hewen Hun Hein, sure. um, where we, we see like four torrential gear hulks, some some whirler virtuoso, um, which is uh, yeah, a pretty crazy one to see, um, and then you know, harness lightning glamour of genius. Um, you know, sort of the, the, the typical kit and caboodle that we would uh, commonly see. Uh, one essence flux, which is uh, the hotness, right? Get With to gear hulk. Get, get to <laughs> go blink your gear hulk. Woo! Uh, and I mean, you can blink it again. And then you, yeah, then you, you can blink it. You just, yeah, it's just, crazy. You, yeah. Uh, but I mean, like you can even do something like blink a virtuoso, uh, get some energy, make a make a thopter. Like it, it's cute. It's uh, you know, it's a fun of. That's definitely the that qualifies as a fun of. So this is basically Shodi So because deck from the Pro Tour, except it doesn't have black, which yeah. seems wrong. But May- I guess I mean, maybe top the, it. Yeah, I mean maybe the mana base is a little bit easier. So I, I, I do like that he he really does have a, a message that he wants to to send to people though on the sideboard. Oh yeah, <laughs> all to all the villages. Yeah, to all the villages. <laughs> He's sending him a message. <laughs> He's playing. I'm afraid it's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> playing for village messenger in the sideboard, just for you know when people are like, well, you know, he's clearly control deck. I'm I'm gonna take all this removal. <laughs> then he's like, <laughs> turn one, turn <laughs> one. Village messenger. Oh man, that's actually the best. He's got something for you. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've seen uh, you know, control decks. You know, it, so for example, like in modern, you'll see like. Just got controlled Exile sideboard into like Geist of Saint Draft for kind of the similar effect. <laughs> Villa's Messenger is like the poorest man's Geist of Saint Draft. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> just the worst, the worst Geist of Saint Draft ever. But I, uh, I, I, gets, I can't disagree with you. It, it's definitely just like a goblin guide, right? Like <laughs> like, and the matchups you bring it in, it's just 
<laughs> just doing work. Yeah, more, more than likely. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that. That is a surprising card to see as a four of in a, on a sideboard of especially a deck like this. But. That almost makes me think that it's like a misprint. Like, could that have been something else? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe not. I don't maybe, know. Maybe that was his winning strategy. Um, if you are looking for the, the the budget deck of the format, it is. Uh, still very much so the green red energy deck and we do have a you know a seventh place list kind of showing up here uh piloted by andrew eels uh so this deck's only it's still sub a hundred dollars um to to kind of get everything literally everything for it so um if it is something where you're like well i want to get into standard but don't necessarily have a lot of money this this might be an option for you um so definitely you know check it out if it's something that um if you're if you're looking for a deck and not want to you know Spend an arm and a leg getting Avisons and Lilianas and what have you. Uh, this is an option, and it is a lot of fun. It is you know very similar. It's it's standard infect as it were, uh, just making you know a, a giant electrostatic pummeler or just beating people down with bristling hydra. Um, de- decks effective and uh, it, you know it, it's a bit swingy, but I still think it's a contender in the uh, the current format. It's definitely. You know, it's it's definitely not a, a blue white flash or a uh, you know a black green delirium or anything like that, but it, it's still a fun aggressive deck. So definitely something to, to t- take note of, I would say. I agreed. Uh, but I, that's all the standard that I really care about talking. It, it's kind of boring, actually. I'm gonna have to admit that to you. It's just a bunch of blue white flash and black green delirium. I mean, did you guys? Uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah. So I want to want to point out that's because that's the deck I have open to. Oh, you're talking about the blue black zombies. Yeah. I, I, first, I want to point out. Con- congrats! Like, I should say congrats, to Jack Kiefer, because he beat. Is it? He's a young guy. He beat Josh Cho and Steve Rubin. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> on his way through, so uh, good on him, um, Steve Rubin. Uh, I don't know if you got you know this guy. It's a pretty good Magic player. So <laughs> he won a Pro Tour once. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the black blue zombies deck is uh, actually the deck I was on before I switched to the black red version, and this is pretty similar. Uh, playing now the four drop slot could, was before was Kalidus. I was trying out um, um, G- uh, Gisen Giralf, uh and he has uh, Mind Rack Demons. But the same idea. You know, playing Key of the City, playing Sinister Concoction, playing the Zombie Special, and, and honestly, this is still the deck I would look at that can you know, really punish Blue White Flash. Um, and any of the decks that only want to play on your turn and they want to get value because uh, Haunted Dead, you know, and the interaction between Haunted Dead and Scrap Hearts Grounder and Prized Amalgam is really, really strong. Um, and it's, you know, you, you don't really have to play into the spell callers to do this. You don't have to, you know, you can just play your aggressive game and eventually they have to start committing to the board, which is weird for that deck to do. So, um, I, I like these zombies decks, and I, I kind of think they keep sort of getting like forgotten. Uh, but they're 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 doing pretty good. And like even that black red zombies deck, I said, you know, handed that off to our, our buddy Elliot, and he, without having played the deck once, took down Comic Town's PBTQ <laughs> the week before fairly uh, so. fairly handily. So, <laughs> so I, I think like you know there are ways to fight this format that uh, you know you can even play around the, the flash menace a little bit. And these zombies decks, you know, they're they're sort of outside my normal uh, range. Um, like, then I won't say like I can play the deck, but I'm saying like it's just not something, and like it's it's good enough that I'm just enjoying it. So, I I, I don't think standard don't 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 put a pin in standard yet. We can still fight for the good fight. <laughs> I guess it's, like there just isn't like a a a, a huge uh, huge thing locally standard wise that uh, it really entices me. So I'm like, man, I'm off it. <laughs> It's it's kind of a slow time for for Magic all in all. I mean, we did, we do have the standard sort of showdown. So you know, once Comic Town gives us more information about that, then maybe that'll be the the thing that kind of you know sparks my interest. But uh, meh, F and M's are kind of like whatever. So uh, before we get off standard real quick here, I don't know if you guys saw this uh, this article. It was on uh, NGG Goldfish and Saffron. Yeah, Island. I read that last night actually. Yeah, it is. Uh, Talking about uh, well, the the name of the article is the importance of hate and hosers and standard, um, and basically what he talks about is how wizards has really gotten away, um, you know, recently that's a, you know last couple of years from really printing good uh, hate cards in the standard. Um, now, obviously, like we don't want to have cards, you know, like trinosphere or like you know blood moon and things like that in standard you know that's going a little bit overboard but it kind of talks about how you know how long has it been since we've had a good graveyard hoser you know what i mean 
like we had a whole block uh, that's built around, you know, kind of graveyard interactions. It's like, okay, that that's good, but at some point, like, there needs to be a check there, right? Like, he kind of talks about, like, original... <laughs> We've had this conversation since Rally the Ancestors, and that article I know mentions that yeah, oh, yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah, about how there was just like no way to to stop Rally the Ancestors. You know, we we don't have anything like Rest in Peace. Um, we don't have you know Nile Spellbomb or even you know anything like that. So it's um, it, you know it can be frustrating at times. Um, it, you know, in the past, it feels like you know they've you know if they have a block, so we'll, we'll use Shadows of Rannistrad block as an example, right? So it's very graveyard centric, you know, delirium, all this. But typically, you know, in, in the past they may have, you know, with Kaladesh, maybe they'll print like uh something like a rest in peace or graph trigger's cage or something to you know, it's it's outside of the block, you know, those cards in Delirium have had their time to kind of do their thing, but with the new block, you know, we can bring in new hate cards and then we can focus on, you know, Artifacts or whatever Kaladesh is trying to bring in, and then maybe the block after Kaladesh, then we can have artifact hosers and things like that. It seems like that's what they have done in the past, and they really got have gotten away with it. And now it's just kind of like, oh, just play whatever you want, which is good, but it's also bad because if there are any good, so so now we've we basically we've seen standard come down to blue white flash and black green delirium, and there really isn't anything that's super good against either of these decks. <laughs> You know, you kind of just have to have a whole deck that is kind of positioned well rather than just a couple of good cards. So. Right. Yeah, you know, before you go into that, you said, you know, rest in peace. Uh, and even, like, uh, when Flash was so good, you had, like, Thragtus printed and Cavernous Souls, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like, for Flash, like, you really see the downside of not having even, like, not just cheap removal, right? But like cheap counter magic. You know what I mean? Well, like, like the decks that should be able to get around like a person who just holds up a four, you know, a five mana creature for flash on their turn. There's, the removal's not even good enough to punish them for that because then you have to spend three mana to hold a removal for that. So you can't even. So you know they, they've moved away from like even efficient removal for these decks that now can prey on the you know again, uh, uh, flash for example being an ability that's just so good and standard. Um, and it's just, I don't so, know, I agree, it's frustrating. Let me put it this way. So, do you think the format would be more interesting if we had, say, Rest in Peace was in Kaladesh, right? So then the Flash decks or the other white base decks have a way to fight against the Delirium decks. without. It's not going to totally kill them. I mean, obviously, uh, Delirium can play any kind of naturalized effect or whatever, and they can deal with it and then go on with their with their day. Um, so if... If white, good day to use it. Yeah. So so if white had rest in peace, right, and then green had some kind of city of solitude type card or something that makes it so that players can only play spells on their own turn to kind of you know shut down flash uh, a little bit, wouldn't honestly, that make like it more a voice interesting? Voice resurgence or like a you know, yeah yeah something like that. Yeah. I think that would make it a lot more interesting. It's not going to totally trying to say decks. Hermit of, of Natter Knowles is yeah, it's it's not, not strong enough. Not strong enough. Yeah. I, I will say, I don't think Rest in Peace is the answer. I, I think they have to move away from inelegant pieces of, of hate, right? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, graveyards okay. are done. <laughs> Artifacts are done. <laughs> Non-basic lands are done. <laughs> we did it. We fixed it. But you know, things like, sca like, like scavenging is a card that I picked Graf that could have come back. Yeah. You know, your Graph Digger's Cage. You know, something that you really have to, like, use the slot for and it isn't just a catch all. Uh but even then we're not even getting the bad versions of it right now. Like that's yeah. the weirdest thing. Like right. we're not even getting like cuz like we had one piece for a little while the Talent of Theros which was the four mana black creature that had constellation. That's the last thing we've had and that was a four mana 2/2. Two -two. Like so I it's yeah, it's but been I, real bad. I'm just, yeah, but what I'm saying is like if you have these tools to to fight these kind of decks like maybe you see a third deck rise up and that you know that's rise an option. Up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, I, I just think you'd have a little bit more competition in the format. As it is, it's basically two two decks. I mean, there are the other decks that you can play, but I mean, if you just look at the tournament results, you're going to consistently see blue white flash, black green delirium at the t you know multiples in the top eight and winning tournaments and all this. So it's a little frustrating, and um, the fact that we kind of went back to the the longer rotation, it's. It's not. Yeah, this it's is. Not, it's not good timing. <laughs> we'll say that. Yeah, I will. I will say if there, if the fixing of some sort isn't coming in, um, Aether Revolt. If there's not some sort of hate, then, uh, you know, I, I will start to. And I know, I know Morgan's already kind of here, but I will start to lose faith a little bit in Wizards. Like I, R and D has been so good. These sets have really been exciting. 
but you have seen these sets quickly turn into just jamming the best things against each other. You know what I mean? Like Delirium is literally here's good Delirium cards, kiss. You know what I mean? And like Flash is like, hey, look at all these things I have. Flash, that's cool. Oh, and Gideon, uh, the most powerful or the most powerful Planeswalker in standard, it's just too and good not to the fly, actual yeah. like third or fourth most powerful Planeswalker ever printed. Uh, cool. There you go. And and like I, I'm not please anybody like the people who came up with these decks. I am not. Like, I'm not downplaying them, but I'm saying that, like, the format is healthy when we have, you know, the, the moving in circles, not getting stuck on just the two, and the hate helps that. Like, if your deck is very powerful, then the hate card should be powerful enough that you can't just play it every week, or you can't just play the same list every week. And if they don't do that, but they continue to play mag you know, make magic the way they are now, where you have, again, really inefficient removal, and just, like good like one or two good mythics that need to see play, you know what I mean? You know, Flash is literally like, oh, cool, here's Avacyn and Gideon. You know what I mean? Uh, Delirium was like, oh, cool. Here's you know uh, our uh, your Liliana and your um, Ishkana. Like the, you know what I mean? Like, and then obviously that's not the whole deck, but it feels like it sometimes. So I, hopefully they'll start to fix this. And they, and they already said that by having them go back in and reevaluate like Amonkhet based on the the new rotation has me hopeful that they they recognize that there is there is a result of what they change here. But we'll see, I guess. Yeah. Uh, who knows what the future will bring for Standard, but uh. We'll, we'll just have to kind of wait it out. There you go. There's a, a pseudo question of the week, but not question of the week. Yeah, <laughs> a, a tangent of the week, if you will. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much everything for uh, the competitive segment. So uh, let's move on to the uh, end of the show and the wrap up. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, we have the uh, you know 2016 World Magic Cup starting on Friday. Uh, it starts. Um, at about what 4 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, so. Uh, Yes. So if you want to wake up uh, uh, super early, you can. But if you are on the uh, in the Eastern time zone, uh, we have figured out basically that uh, uh, the unified modern um, uh, portion on Friday should probably start around like 9 a.m. So you'll be all set um, if you don't want to watch, you know, the, the team sealed. Yeah, it, it's a really weird setup. Um, they're doing it differently than they have in years past with the World Magic Cup as far as the format of the tournament. So they're going to have three rounds of Team Sealed and then four rounds of Unified Modern. And then I believe like the whole rest of the tournament is Unified Modern. But yeah, it's, it's a little hard to follow. But uh, yeah, um, if you are interested in Unified Modern and seeing how that goes, then definitely pay attention this weekend because there's going to be a lot. <laughs> Uh, there most certainly uh, most certainly is, um, and then uh, we also have Star City Games Knoxville. Um, the tour is going to be coming there, and it's going to be a standard tournament. Um, so definitely check that out over the weekend as well. And um, that is uh, going to be uh, everything that uh, we're going to cover this week on the show. Um, if you want to reach out to us, if you you know uh, feel free to do so. We have uh, you know we're on Twitter. We are just at symbol. Uh, at, we're your end step, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, you can do a quick search for that. Um, you'll, you'll get directed to our, uh, our Twitter page. And then um, we're also on Facebook, uh, which is uh, just uh, do a quick search for uh, your Instagram on Facebook. We pop right up, uh, along with Comic Town Gaming Center. You do a quick search for them. And then um, we have an email at your at gmail.com if you ever uh, have any questions or concerns for us. We, you can download us on uh, iTunes. Uh, you can get us on the. Uh, Google Play uh, uh, Music Store, uh, as well as uh, via MTG Cast, which is a, a great repository for many wonderful Magic: The Gathering shows. So uh, go there and uh, pick out your uh, your new favorite uh, your new favorite show. Uh, but uh, I do believe that is going to be everything for us this week. Uh, we uh, do appreciate everything that uh, you guys do for us, and uh, keep us in good spirits. And uh, you have a uh, wonderful rest of your week.